Okay, I'll do my laundry. I, I'm starting Kids Quest. Okay, I love you too. Bye. Oh, hi, Kids Quest. Uh, good morning. <laughs> Didn't see you there. I was just on a very important call. Um, hey, um, uh, I'm glad you're here this morning. And uh, hey, I was just about to do some singing and dancing, so I hope you will join me too. So why don't you stand up, grab an instrument if you have one, and get ready to sing. <clears throat> oh, little by little, every day. Little by little, every way, my Jesus is changing me. He's changing me since I made a turn about face. I've been growing in His grace. My Jesus is changing me. He's changing me. My blessed Savior, I'm not the same person that I used to be. Sometimes it's slow going, but there's hope knowing that one day perfect I will be. Little by little every day, Little by little, every way, my Jesus is changing me. He's changing me since I made a turn about face. I've been growing in His grace. My Jesus is changing me. He's changing me. My blessed Savior. I'm not the same person that I used to be. Sometimes it's slow going, but there's hope knowing that one day perfect I will be. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. The fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. And if we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step, keep in step with the Spirit. If we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step, keep in step with the Spirit. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. The fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness gentleness and self-control and if we live by the spirit let us keep in step keep in step with the spirit and if we live by the spirit let us keep in step keep in step with the spirit the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness. The fruit of the Spirit is faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. In my wrestling and in my doubt, in my failures you won't walk out your great love will lead me through you are the peace in my troubled sea oh you are the peace in my troubled sea in the silence you won't let go in the questions your truth will hold 
your great love will lead me through. You are the peace in my troubled sea. Oh, oh. You are the peace in my troubled sea. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you. Oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. I won't fear what tomorrow brings With each morning I'll rise and sing My God's love will lead me through You are the peace in my troubled sea oh, oh. You are the peace in my troubled sea My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you, oh, my lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore. Fire before us, you're the brightest You will lead us through the storm Fire before us, you're the brightest You will lead us through the storm Hey! Fire before us, you're the brightest You will lead us through the storm Fire before us you're the brightest, you will lead us through the storm. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, shining in the darkness, I will follow you, whoa. My lighthouse, my lighthouse, I will trust the promise, you will carry me safe to shore. Safe to shore, safe to shore, safe to shore, shore, Good morning, Kids Quest Arenos. I hope you're all having a wonderful Sunday. And man, it is so nice outside. I hope that right after this, you all go spend some time in the sun. Man, won't that be nice? Oh, but before that, you know, we're going to continue on with our series, uh, starting with the lesson three on science. That's right, over the past few weeks we've been using cool science experiments to help us learn lessons about the Holy Spirit. In our first week we learned that we have one God who is in three persons. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. And last week we learned what the Holy Spirit does in us. We learned that the Holy Spirit does so many things. First of all, that having the Holy Spirit is sweet. He is our strength when we are weak, and He's our comforter when we are sad. But most importantly, we learned that the Holy Spirit helps us to hear and understand the message of the Gospel. And that message is that Jesus died on the cross for your sins, and whoever believes in Him will be saved. So that's what the Holy Spirit does in us. But did you know that the Holy Spirit does stuff through us too? That's right. When the Holy Spirit lives in you, He gives each and every one of us special and unique gifts that can help us complete tasks, help other people, and ultimately glorify God. We see this all over in the Bible, starting with Joseph in the Old Testament. Do you remember Joseph? Yeah. 
God's Spirit gave Joseph the ability to interpret dreams. And Joseph was even able to interpret the dreams of Pharaoh, which led to him becoming second in command over all of Egypt. Another time, we see the Holy Spirit give special gifts to a guy named Bezalel. The Holy Spirit gave Bezalel the gift of wisdom and artistic genius, so that he was able to create beautiful things inside the tabernacle. And don't forget about the prophets. What are the prophets again? Well, a prophet is someone who receives a direct message from God that they're to share with people to help instruct them or to tell them something that's going to happen in the future. God gave this special ability to many people such as Isaiah, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, and more. And you see, all those things the Holy Spirit did was in the Old Testament, but the Holy Spirit continued to work throughout the New Testament in new and amazing ways and in all sorts of different people. You see, Jesus, by the power of the Holy Spirit, was able to perform many miracles. And like we learned in week one, when Jesus ascended to heaven, he said that he would give the Holy Spirit to his followers. Jesus' followers received the Holy Spirit. And at certain times, they were able to speak in tongues, heal the sick, and help the blind see. These disciples would use their gifts to help other people and show that God's love was for everyone. You know, it's pretty cool to see how the Holy Spirit works differently in each person and how the Spirit works differently in different times of history. And what's even more cool is that the Holy Spirit can work in you in totally unique and special ways. The Holy Spirit gives each and every one of us unique and special gifts that we can use to serve one another, bring us joy, and ultimately give glory to God. And although each spiritual gift can be different, there's one part about spiritual gifts that seems to be true for all of them. And that is humility. Do you know what humility is? Humility or being humble is when you're really good at something, but you don't brag about it. Humility is not thinking that you're more important than other people. Sometimes humility can be really hard, especially when we're really good at something because we just want everyone to know how good we are. But God wants us to be humble and to thank him for the gifts he's given us. Think about this, for example. Imagine you could have any superpower you wanted. You could fly, use firepower, shoot lasers from your eyes, but the only catch is you could never do it in front of someone and you could never tell anyone about it. I mean, would you even want it after that? Isn't the point of having superpowers so you could show them off? I think that would be the ultimate test of humility. Being able to do something extraordinary, but not bragging about it. And that's the kind of... Oh, uh, I think it's my mom again. Hi, mom. Wow, you would not believe what I've done. Wait, I am not your mother. Uh, oh, sorry, Dr. Heimer. Uh, I was just calling to tell you that I am so smart. I cannot believe what I am doing oh. in my lab. It is amazing. There is no one that is as smart as me. I cannot believe well, that, that's it. That's pretty oh. cool. What are you even doing? Actually, Dr. Heimer, I'm in the middle of talking about spiritual gifts and being humble. Oh, being humble. Well, being humble is when you're really good at something but not bragging about it to everyone. That is what humility is? I think I need to work on being more humble. Uh, funny enough, I have an experiment that actually could be humble. Well, that's pretty cool. Well, let's see what it is. Well, you see, it's right here. Isn't that amazing? Um, I don't quite see anything there. Are you sure you got it right? Well, it's because it's humble. You see, on my plate is a big fire. Oh, oh no, it is here. But that is the point. You, it has all the power and the heat of a fire, but you can't see it. It's very humble. I don't quite see anything there. Well, if you don't believe me, let's show you. I, I have some paper right here. Although it may be hard to see, there is a flame. Look. Oh. The flame is just as hot and powerful. Better put that out. 
And that is why I call it the humble flame. Yeah, powerful, hot, yet humble. Mm. Oh, and don't forget, I am a very experienced scientist. Don't ever play with fire at home, especially without asking. That's pretty amazing, Dr. Heimer. And you just gave me a great idea. I gotta get back to my lesson. You're very welcome. And I'll work on being humble too. <laughs> Auf Wiedersehen. See you later. Wow, I think Dr. Heimer needs a little lesson on humility. <laughs> but nonetheless, this experiment was pretty cool. And it was pretty fitting that he made a humble fire. Even though that fire had the same ability to, to burn or to warm up a room, it didn't shine bright for everyone to see. It wasn't waving around its flame so everyone would stop and stare. No, it's almost like it was a humble fire. It had great power, but it didn't brag about it and it wasn't showing off to everyone. In a similar way, that's our responsibility with spiritual gifts. The Holy Spirit doesn't give you spiritual gifts so that you can show off and let people know how amazing and cool you are. No, the Holy Spirit gives you gifts to use them in humility so that you can share them with other people, help one another, and ultimately give glory to God, not yourself. And I think the more humble we are, the more God will use us in miraculous ways. Talking about humility and the Holy Spirit reminds me of a story in the Bible. Let's have a look. In the book of Acts chapter 8, we meet Philip, one of the disciples of Jesus. Philip and many disciples traveled to Samaria to tell people that Jesus was the Messiah. Many crowds gathered to listen to what the disciples had to say. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, the disciples were able to take away evil spirits from people and even heal people who could not walk or move in any way. The people in the city were filled with great joy. Around this time, we meet a man named Simon. For many years, Simon had done evil magic tricks in Samaria. He went around telling people how great he was, and people often called him the Great One because of his magic. But his power did not come from God. After hearing the disciples preach, Simon believed them, and he put his trust in Jesus and was baptized. Simon followed Philip and the disciples, and he saw many miracles. But Simon thought to himself, Oh, if I had this power, I would be an even greater person. People would honor me even more. So Simon went up to the disciple Peter and offered to buy the power of the Holy Spirit so that he could do miracles too. You do not love God, Peter said. Pray that God will forgive your evil thoughts. You must not let sin control you. Simon had realized the bad thing he had done, and he said, Pray for me. Don't let terrible things happen to me. They prayed, and after that, Peter and John went back to Jerusalem. Along the way, they stopped in many Samaritan villages to keep preaching the good news about Jesus. Yikes! Simon only wanted the Holy Spirit so that he could make himself look good, so that he could keep bragging to people about how cool he was and how great he is. But the disciples quickly told him, that's not what the Holy Spirit does. Like I said before, the gifts of the Holy Spirit are given to us so that we can use them to help other people, to show people how much God loves them, and that we can ultimately give glory to God, not to show people how good we are. So as you discover the amazing, special, and unique spiritual gifts that God has given you, remember what they're used for. Remember to be humble and to thank God every day for the gifts that he has given you. Maybe you're thinking right now, I don't even know what my spiritual gifts are. Well, a good place to start is to see what you're already doing. What are some of the gifts and talents that you already have and things that you've been able to do well? Also, I would encourage you to ask your Christian friends and families about the gifts that they see in you. Sometimes people can see gifts in us that we don't even see ourselves. And don't forget, you can also encourage your friends and family and share with them the gifts that you see God has given them. And lastly, the Bible says for us to look for and desire the gifts of the Spirit. So maybe in your quiet time, 
like at night before bed, you can pray and ask God to fill you with the Holy Spirit and help show you the unique and special gifts that he's given you. Let's pray. God, thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you that the Holy Spirit lives in us and works through us to help other people and give glory to God. Lord, as we use our spiritual gifts, help us to be humble, not to brag, but God, to thank you for the, ma the amazing gifts that you've given us. We pray this in your son's name. Amen.